Print students, welcome back. Today we are talking chords. Um, first thing I want to go through is the difference between a note and a chord. We do a little bit of the history behind this, and then we're going to talk about an E minor chord. So the big difference between a note and a chord is a note is one and a chord is many. So when we're playing notes, which we've been doing this whole time, an E note, we just play one string. A B note, we just play one string. G note, just one string. Now, if we we're trying to play a chord, I am actually gonna play all three of those notes at the same time. G, B, and E combined make an E minor chord. So we'll get back to that. So, notes together make a chord. And it's not just on the guitar, you can also see this on the instrument behind me, the piano. I can play a note here, I can play another note here, and I can play a third note here. Those are notes, but the second I play them together, we get a C major chord. So, let's talk a little bit about the history of notes. Um, originally, uh, excuse me, chords. Originally in vocal music, that's kind of the first type of music that really emerges, right? You have singers each singing a different note. When you put them together, they create a chord. You hear this a lot of times in like church choirs and stuff like that. Um, vocalists cannot sing multiple notes at the same time. Some monks have learned how to do two different notes. Totally other subject. Most people cannot sing two notes at the same time. Um, so you need to have singers together. In fact, most instruments cannot notes at the same time. If you're a flautist, you're a clarinet player, a saxophone player, violinist, you cannot play multiple notes at the same time. That's why you often see these instruments in quartets or small ensembles. It's because one flute would play a note, another flute would play another, and then another. You put them together, you get a chord. This is actually one of the very, very special things about our instrument. It is one of the few instruments that can actually play chords. Um, another one is the piano. So other instruments that can play chords would be instruments similar to the guitar or similar to the piano. So an organ, for instance, very similar to a piano, that can play chords. A harpsichord, another instrument very similar to the piano, that can also play chords. Um, as far as other instruments similar to the guitar, uh, a mandolin, which I have over here, you can play a chord on the mandolin ukulele, banjo, a harp, um, even a bass guitar, even though they typically don't, they can play chords if they want to. So chords, huge, huge part of our instrument. We play chords all the time. It's very prominent in rock music. So let's talk about how to read chords on the guitar. Typically, a chord is shown by a chord chart. Now, I gave you a PDF with it. But basically, it should look like this part of the guitar. We have a dark black line up here. That's this. It's called the ninth. And you have your first fret. And that would be the first line going across. The second fret, the third fret. The important part are the lines going down. These are your strings. So if you have a circle above the string, that means to play the string for that chord. If you have an X above it, it means do not play that string for this chord. So if we're looking at an E minor chord, we have a circle above the first string. That means we play E. We have a circle above the second string. That means we play B. We have a circle above the third string G. That means we play G. We have an X over the fourth string D. Do not play the D. So to play an E minor chord, I can take my thumb, put it on the third string, and just strum all the strings. Try to avoid... Those are three individual notes. They really need to be played together in order to be a chord. That's an E minor chord. Now I've handed out guitar picks this week, so let's talk about guitar picks. We often use guitar picks when playing chords. 
a little bit easier on the fingers and also when you do like a down up pitch it's much easier to play fast than if you were trying to do that with your thumb and index finger. So guitar picks. The proper way to hold them is between your index finger and thumb. It is very common to see people try to put their middle finger on there as well. It may feel more stable but you're not getting as much mobility that way. Um, that goes into a lot of science behind the hand and how the tendons work but basically because this index finger is so independent from the rest of the fingers you don't want to bring in a more dependent finger in there with it. Ideally between the index and the thumb you want the long part of the pick going towards the strings. I put my guitar pick on the third string and I strum downwards. I don't want people doing up we will talk about how to do an up strum, but for right now, I want you guys all doing down strums. So, you also want to aim towards the ground. You often find students do this. They sort of bring their pick out. I don't know if they're trying to look like a rock star like Pete Townsend or something, but um, that is incorrect. We want to go downward. The reason behind that is when you go out like this, a lot of times you'll miss your first string, sometimes even your second string of the chord. So you're going up downward, you're getting every single string that you need. So for the E minor chord, I would like to practice doing a whole note, then strumming in half notes, and then strumming in quarter notes. So a whole note, super easy, take our guitar pick, put it on that third string, and go one two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Feel free to join in. We'll go ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's talk about That's going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So why don't you guys take out your guitar, take out your pick, play along with me. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, last thing to talk about. Quarter notes. This means you're strumming on each number. It might take a second to really practice getting your pick back where you need it to be. Um, it's okay if the first couple of times you accidentally hit the fourth string or you don't quite get all of them. It's all about practicing. Um, our muscle memory is not used to this yet, so the more you do it, the easier it's going to get to bring that pick back exactly where you need it to go. So let's try these quarter notes. I'm going to slow it down just a hair. So we'll go one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that is it for chords today. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions and good luck practicing.